Java, the object-oriented programming language you've been avoiding because it seems too complicated. You might prefer working with something simpler like Python or JavaScript, and I don't blame you. You're not a real engineer anyway. Relax, relax. That one hit close to home, didn't it? Relax, I'm just joking. All right. Java does have a reputation for being hard, not just because it's object-oriented, but because there's a lot more to Java than just writing code. There are different versions of Java. There's the JDK, the JRE, and the JVM, as well as build tools like Maven and Gradle. All of this can be overwhelming, even for experienced developers, let alone beginners. Well, today I'm breaking down the Java development ecosystem in a way that's easy to digest. Let's get into it. Java was created in 1995 by James Gosling while working at Sun Microsystems. Fast forward to 2010, Oracle Corporation acquired Sun Microsystems and with it, Java. That's why today, if you need to download Java, you can head over to Oracle's website. But instead of seeing the option to download Java, you'll see something called the JDK. Let's break this down. The JDK or Java Development Kit is a software package that contains everything needed to write, compile, and run Java applications. It's the full toolkit for Java development. Within the JDK, there are four key components, the compiler, the JVM or Java Virtual Machine, libraries and development tools. The compiler or JAVAC converts the Java code you write into bytecode, which is platform independent. The JVM or Java Virtual Machine then executes this bytecode on any system with a compatible JVM, enabling Java's cross-platform compatibility. I'll explain what this means in a bit. The libraries provide pre-built classes for data structures, networking, file I.O., and much more. Finally, the development tools include debuggers, profilers, and other utilities that help streamline coding, testing, and optimization. The JDK comes in different flavors, with the most common one being Java SE or Standard Edition. This is what most developers use for general purpose programming. There is also Java EE or Enterprise Edition, which has been rebranded to Jakarta EE. It builds on Java SE by adding frameworks and APIs for enterprise applications. One of Java's biggest strengths is its write once, run anywhere capability. This is possible because Java code isn't directly compiled into machine code. It's compiled into byte code, which is then executed by the JVM or the Java Virtual Machine. Since different operating systems have their own versions of the JDK, the JVM ensures that the same Java code can run on any system with a compatible JVM, regardless of the underlying OS. Another term you'll hear often is the JRE or the Java Runtime Environment. If the JDK is for developing Java applications, the JRE is for running them. The JRE includes the JVM, which executes the Java bytecode. It also contains core libraries that provides everything needed to run the Java application. However, it does not include a compiler or development tools because it's designed for only running Java applications and not writing or compiling them. This is why servers or production machines usually have the JRE instead of the full JDK. They don't need the extra tools meant for development. You following so far? Great. Now let's talk about build automation tools like Maven and Gradle. After you're done writing Java code, turning it into a runnable application involves multiple steps. First, the code must be compiled into bytecode. Before or during this compilation, dependencies from external repositories need to be resolved and included into the project to ensure that the application has the necessary libraries. Next, tests must be run to ensure the code functions properly. Finally, the application is packaged into a .jar or .war file for deployment. Doing all of this manually is not scalable. This is where build tools come in. Maven uses an XML-based configuration in a POM file to manage dependencies and build projects in a structured way. Gradle is more flexible and uses Groovy or Kotlin-based configuration in a build.gradle file and is known for faster builds. These tools automate build processes, making Java development more efficient as projects grow in complexity. Additionally, Maven and Gradle configurations help IDEs like IntelliJ and Eclipse automatically detect and load project dependencies. This makes it much easier to set up and work with Java projects without manually configuring class paths and libraries. Now, do you always need a build tool? No. You can write and compile Java code without Maven or Gradle. But as your project scales, handling dependencies, testing, and deployments become much easier to do with build tools. They also help streamline workflows. Here's what we've learned today. The JDK or the Java Development Kit is a full toolkit for Java development and comprises of the compiler, the JVM, libraries, and dev tools. The JVM or the Java Virtual Machine executes bytecode, enabling cross-platform compatibility. The JRE or the Java Runtime Environment contains the JVM and libraries, but it does not include the compiler as it's only meant for running Java applications. 
Maven and Gradle will help automate builds, manage dependencies, and package Java applications efficiently. Java may seem complicated, but once you understand how these pieces fit together, it all makes a lot more sense. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe for more. If you have any topics you'd like to see me cover, leave them in the comments. I'll catch you on the next one. Until then.